Hi, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss how Gibraltar, a region that voted very much against Brexit, will be the first to suffer the serious consequences of the votes of others in the UK, as it's going to be excluded from any future trade deal with the EU. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, the EU is a union in the very real sense of the term, they back each other like a close-knit family. Yes, as with any family, they bicker as well. But when the chips are down, they are there for each other. The UK used to be part of that family and used to get that backing. But we have decided to leave. Now, Spain, a remaining and committed member, has now suggested that Gibraltar cannot form part of any UK-EU deal unless they are happy with a settlement on ownership with the UK. In other words, either Gibraltar is made a Spanish territory or it will not enjoy any of the benefits of an EU deal from 2021, even if the UK agrees one for all of its other territories. Now, you can argue the rights and wrongs of this from a moral point of view, but that would be to mistake the EU for a neutral arbiter or even a group that should be neutral. After all, for all the nice things I say about the EU and its political purpose, it would, in this case, be acting to force a change of citizenship on an unwilling population. The EU will be hypocrites, but that won't stop them. It is not neutral. Spain is a part of the EU. The UK is not. So Spain will always get its position backed by the rest of the EU in any discussions with the UK. And it is really that simple. Now, I don't believe that the UK is going to have a deal with the EU either at the end of this year. So in one sense, you could argue it has no immediate bearing on things. If the transition period ends without any substantial agreement on anything, as seems fairly likely at the moment, then Gibraltar would face the same chaotic conditions as most of the rest of the UK, regardless of what Spain wants. However, that chaos is not going to end until we deal with the EU. A US trade deal will not calm things down and nobody else is keen for a comprehensive deal with us until we finish with the EU discussions. And even if they were, even if every other country in the world wanted to do that deal with us, that is still not going to calm things down. The EU are around us. They are our neighbours in every direction, literally every direction. Now, I don't know how we as a country are going to react to the Brexit chaos that Boris Johnson is threatening. Um, there are too many variables. I believe that Boris Johnson will try to get us to swallow it by telling people it has nothing to do with Brexit. After all, the Conservatives seem to be quite good at this. Conditions clearly get worse. People can see their life getting worse. They can see the country going down. But as long as the Conservatives manage to blame it on someone that's not them, people sort of go along with it and vote them back in anyway. And I don't actually understand that, even if you believe it's not the Conservatives' fault. Why are you voting for the people that are not making it any better? There's another party that's saying, actually, we can make it better. Give them a crack at it, really. Um, but, you know, the chaos will still be chaotic, regardless of who play people blame for it. And, and that chaos will not end until we deal with the EU. And, and, and something that can only be prolonged if those discussions with the EU turn acrimonious, which they will if we just decide to blame the EU for these problems. could also be prolonged if the UK signs up to a mutually exclusive deal with the US because the US trade deal as proposed by the United States, and if we want a quick one with them, it's going to have to be basically what they're wanting, means that it's impossible to come to agreement with the EU. So we'd then have to renege on the US deal. But at some point whether it's in a couple of years or whether it's in 10 years or 20 years, whenever, at some point, the UK has to treat with the EU. Whether it be Boris Johnson's government, another Conservative government after they've toppled Johnson for the mess he's causing, or a Labour government, at some point, it has to happen. And when that point comes, Spain will go, hello, who owns Gibraltar? And the UK will say, we do, actually. And then Spain will go, oh, OK. Gibraltar is excluded from any deal that we agree. And it'll be that simple. Literally, the only way, the only way you'll be able to get a comprehensive deal with the EU, which we will need, 
whilst also retaining territorial control over Gibraltar, will be to rejoin the EU. Sure, Spain could still vote veto that as well, uh, but in the case of wanting to rejoin quickly, maybe, and I only say maybe, the other member states could slap Spain down just as they did during the withdrawal negotiations. After all, if we rejoin, then we're part of that family again. Failing that, however, we cannot get a deal without throwing Gibraltar under the bus. So it's a good job that Conservative governments are not ones to throw their own side under the bus when it suits them, is it? Yes. Anyway, our own Foreign Office, naturally enough, are saying that they will refuse to exclude Gibraltar from negotiations. Of course, it's easy for them to say to that now because they're not intending to go for a deal anyway. But in saying that, all they're really saying is, OK, we'll not have a deal then. There's no point in negotiations going ahead. Spain will veto any deal that is otherwise agreed, as any member state has the right to do. But the other 26 member states will not object. Because the only way you can get a member state to support something that it'd really rather not is for the other member states to promise it something in return. Though they won't. They won't do that. They won't threaten Spain with anything. They won't promise Spain anything. They'll just let them do whatever. And what they could do, and I'm, I'm not saying anyone's threatening to do this, but what you could argue will make sense, because here's the scenario. Now, before we can conclude any deal with Brussels, we have to conclude a deal with Madrid. So Boris starts... You know, he needs to start brushing up his own Espanol. And the, you could argue that in such a scenario, why shouldn't there be London-Madrid negotiations first? Spain may well say, actually, given that we're going to veto any deal anyway, really we should be holding talks with the UK and agreeing the Gibraltar position before we move on. Now, I don't think that is going to happen but it is the sort of thing they might ask for and it might get some, you know, they could insist that as part of the negotiations you have got those Gibraltar talks at every step because at the end of the day, if the final step isn't going to be signed, sealed and delivered until it's concluded anyway, you might as well. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.